In this video, we're going to take a look at the P5 sound library as well as the P5 speech library to create almost uh, AI generated sound text to speech, but also some speech recognition software as well. So, I'm going to create a P5 project, and the first thing I need to do is I need to import the P5 speech library. So, I'm going to do this here, I'm going to show you where to get that from. So, I'm going to paste that in, but if you want to find it, if I just go to P5 libraries, go to the libraries page and scroll down, you see there's lots here. I'm going to be doing some videos on some of them. If I search for speech, we've got this library here which we can click on and then we can go ahead and get the CDN link there. Okay, so what you may want to do is build this on top of your previous project which recorded sound. You might want to be able to play the sound back or whatever, but that's entirely up to you. I'll let you follow that video and then come back to this one if that's what you want to do. So, first things first, I want to set a bunch of variables. So I'm going to have let words and make an array. So that's just going to be the words we're going to use in this project. So we've got mineral water, for example. We'll have potato. And then we'll have trash bag. Just three words, really relevant what they are. They can be anything you want. And then what we're going to do is go into our setup and start creating everything we need. So first things first, I'm going to make a little variable. So I'm going to say let um, let sound play equals a new p5 dot speech. Make sure there's a capital S on there. And that's going to also use the library. And then what I can do is a bunch of different functions with this library. So I could, for example, set the pitch. So I could do sort of set pitch. And it defaults at one, but it can be anything between zero and two. So two is quite high pitch, and zero is quite low pitch. Then I can do set rate, which again, if you do 0.1, it's really slow. If you do one, it's like normal speech. And then I can do sound play dot speak, and I can put something in there. So I could say, press the button to start the speech test. Now if I run that, you probably won't be able to hear it, but I can tell you for a fact that's just works because it's just coming to my headphones. Um, now there are a bunch of voices you can use as well, and um, they seem to work differently on different browsers, so that's up to you, but you can just do that as so in soundplay.setvoice. So for example, I could set my voice to be, so I've got that straight off their site, so I've got soundplay.setvoice and that will set a different one, okay? Um, but like I said, some don't work on certain browsers. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a button which is just going to be one to check my answers. So I've already got this pre-written, so I'm just going to do answer button. So it's going to say, I'm just going to take this sentence out so we don't hear it every single time I run the program. And we're going to have a nice little button. When we press this, obviously it's going to crash at the moment. We need a, a function called attempt answer. So attempt and say like that. And then what we're going to do is a bunch of very quite easy um, lines of code that allow us to check if we said something correctly. So I can do if, now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a thing called a detector. So I'm going to say if the detector exists, so if we've detected some sound, then we're going to go ahead and do something. Okay, so if it's if we've said something, we want to pull out that string that we've said and check it's right using an if statement. Now, this um, detector is literally just going to be um, a string that gets returned. So what we're going to do is we're going to say another function called show result. So show result, and that's going to check our answer and attempt answer is going to allow us to actually record what's going on. So I'm going to make this detector a global variable, so let detector. And then what I'm going to do is put this in the right place. So this is a part of our shown result, checking we're actually right. And in attempt answer, what we're going to do is do detector. Probably didn't need to paste that in, that was just pure laziness. Detector equals a new p5 dot 
speech rec, which is a speech recognizer, and we're going to do detector dot on end equals show result and then detector dot start. Now what that's going to do is once that has finished detecting what you've said, it's going to go into this function and check what you've done. So we can say if detector dot result string, then we're going to just to do dot to lowercase to lower case. And if that's equal to we're going to make another variable called counter so it tracks which question we're on. So if it detects that and we've correct, then we can just do score plus equals one, counter plus equals one. And if you want to say incorrect, you can put that in an else. So we're going to need to have let score equals zero, let counter equals zero. So that's going to work for that. We're going to throw in some text so we can actually see what's going on. And then um, see if we get things right. So I'm just going to go into the draw. I'm going to throw in a clear so we can see the result. And what should happen is it should say we've got a score when it runs. We've got an error there. Or is it just crashing? I'm not sure. There we go. So I've got zero correct. Now, if I press this button here and I say mineral water, it should up our score, but we'll see. Mineral water. So that's not done anything just yet, so we'll try again. Mineral water. And I think it's possibly down to me using my microphone for this. So what we can do to check it's all working, we can just do um, console.log detector.result string. And we'll see if it's pulling back anything. So everything else looks fine code wise. Hello. So it's pulled up. I've said hello there. So if I do mineral water, so it's mineral water there. Now sometimes it seems to think you've got a full stop or not, and sometimes it doesn't. So if it does do that, we just stick a full stop in there, a full stop in there, a full stop in there. And try that again. So we can run that now and say mineral water. I've got one correct. So the next one will be potato. So I press it. Potato the better potato it's really not understanding my accent today is it potato there we go so I've got two correct now so that's what it's. so it's allowed us to create a button that every time we press it it can check what we're saying um, you can set it to do lots of other things like it's constantly listening to you and uh, transcripting what you say if you wanted to you could even have it so you're singing a song it's writing the lyrics or something along those lines um, honestly, it only stops when you um, stop saying the sentence. In fact, when I stopped then, it would probably stop. So, But you can say it so it's constantly listening until you press a button. But that is then detecting our sound and converting it to text and allow us to check if we've got things right. So I'll do one last one, which was trash bag. So trash bag. Trash bag. Still saying but. It's not really liking it today, is it? Trash bag. And then, because I pressed it too many times, it's not had, it's not had fun with that. So that there is giving us a little error saying too low a case because at that point, I would detect it's undefined. If I'm honest with you, it's probably because it couldn't detect what I was saying and it's just coming back with nothing. So let's try again. Mineral water. Potato. Trash bag. So I've got three corrects, so it's worth that time. So I think as well, like this bit of an old microphone, it's not really handling that. But that's allowed us to attempt, attempt an answer and show a result. We're showing our text on screen. And obviously we could pass that score back to another page saying what, what score you got. And obviously you can add more words by just literally adding to your array. Obviously it's can be pulled from a database or anything like that. But that's it, quite short, quite easy. Um, and hopefully it was nice and easy to follow. Code's all on screen now, so you can copy that down. And I will see you in the next video.